Welcome to our tutorial about the transport panel. This is a very convenient multitask floating panel that gives you access to 11 important tools. When you're working with the DAW, there's a lot of stuff to pay attention to. Are your inputs working? How are your output levels? Do you have MIDI activity? Is your CPU overloaded? Are you able to get around quickly? Can you activate your tempo quickly, etc. All of this and more can be done quickly and assessed in an at-a-glance way from the transport panel. It's a real space saver, even if you're working with more than one monitor. It really cuts down on the time you spend moving your mouse from command to command, window to window, meter to meter. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning what these tools are and how to customize the display of the transport panel. If you don't see the transport panel, select transport from the main menu and select transport panel. You can also use the shortcut key F2. In my menu, transport panel is checked. That means it's displayed already. What we see here is Cubase's default presentation of the transport panel. If you show all the tools in the panel, it actually doesn't even fit on my monitor screen here. Let's go back to the default view so we can squish it in this monitor resolution size. You probably don't need all the tools on it at once, and Cubase gives you an easy way to hide and show the tools. Just right click. That's a control click on your Mac anywhere on the panel. Select the tools that you want to see. Any tool that's checked will appear on the transport panel. You can opt to show all, you can use Cubase's default, or you can select some of these different categories here. You can also do a custom display of the transport panel. Select Setup. Use the arrows to toggle items from the visible column to the hidden items column, and vice versa. You can reposition the tools on the transport panel using the Move Up and Move Down buttons. Simply click Move Up to move an item to the left, and Move Down, and your tool will move over to the right. Let's click OK now that we're done. And let's have a look at some of Cubase's preset views. We can opt to see just the transport buttons. These are the record buttons. We can see the buttons and the time displays. We can see the primary and secondary time display. We can have a look at just the primary time display. That's the mini display. The status fields only show us record modes, the locators, and the master and sync controls. And we can look at the jog and scrub as well as the locators. This is if we're trying to navigate through our project. Let's go back to Cubase's default view. You can quickly close the panel by clicking on the arrows in the upper left and right corners of the panel. F2, or select it from the transport menu to bring it back. Now let's take a few minutes to go through the various tools and items that I showed you earlier. Many of these we cover in greater detail later in this course. If I don't happen to say too much about them here, it means that I do cover it later on in a separate chapter. On the far left, we've got two performance meters. The left is the ASIO time usage meter, and on the right is disk cache usage. What you need to remember here is that if one of these bars reaches the top and stays there, triggering a red warning indicator light up here, you probably need to reduce some of the load on your system. Next, we have the recording modes. The top one selects a linear recording mode. Any recording that's not cycle recording is called linear recording. The drop-down menu underneath shows us the various cycle recording modes. This is when you want to record in a loop. Here's the Auto Quantize button. You'd activate this if you want any MIDI recording to be automatically quantized according to the grid you set up in the Quantize Setup dialog window. Go to MIDI and Quantize Setup to activate that setup dialog box. Let's close that for now. When the button's lit, you'll see an on message and an off message when it's not lit. Generally, buttons on this panel turn white or are lit up when they're active. Next, we have buttons for the locators. Here's our left and right locator buttons. If you press those, you'll go to the locators. Underneath are the punch in and out locations. Here we have the pre and post roll activator buttons. You can enter your times for pre and post roll values here. In these value fields, you can enter the location of your right and left locators. This allows you to position very precisely and quickly. You can also select values with your scroll wheel. 
You can also adjust your locators, of course, by dragging the triangular icons in the project ruler to your desired location. Note that if the display turns crimson or burgundy, it means then the right locator is set before the left locator. When it's blue, the left is before the right. The direction of the triangle makes it obvious which one is right and left. Now let's hide the locator so we've got room to check out our next tool. We're going to check out the jog and scrub wheel. These concentric circles are the shuttle tool, the inner ring is the jog tool, and the innermost ring with the plus and minus sign are the nudge tools. These tools are useful for moving the cursor within a project while you're listening to it. The outside ring is the shuttle wheel. If you move it to the right or left, the cursor will move forward or backward in time. As you can see, the farther from the center you drag the knob, the faster the playback. The maximum speeds are shown by these lines here. To shuttle through your song, click on the circle and then drag it left or right. Hee <laughs> hee! This is a good way to find a spot in your song really quickly. The middle ring is the jog wheel. You can turn this one as much as you want, unlike the shuttle wheel. Just click on the circle and drag it right or left. You can go as fast or slow as you like. This moves the project cursor forward or backward in time, and when you stop moving your mouse, the playback stops. It's also a good tool for finding specific cues in your song. Inside the jog wheel are the nudge frame buttons. These move the cursor forward or backward one frame at a time. These are tools that you would need when you're working or syncing with a video file. Of course, the plus sign takes you forward a frame, and the minus sign takes you back a frame. Next we have the transport display or the transport controls. You'll recognize most of these controls from your CD player. Left to right they are go to previous marker or return to zero, rewind, fast forward, go to next marker or project end, activate cycle mode, stop, play and record. At the top of the main transport are the primary and secondary time display and other tools for navigating within and displaying your project. Currently, my primary time display is in time format, or seconds. That's how my project ruler displays the song. My secondary time display is also in time format. I am able to toggle through the various time display modes. I can simply click on this drop down menu and select a new primary display, or click on this icon to select a new secondary time display. I can switch the primary and secondary time displays by clicking this button here. Notice how my project ruler adjusts to match the project display I select in the primary time display in the transport panel. Clicking the plus or minus signs will nudge the cursor forward or backward, one second at a time if that's the primary time display. I can use this slider to quickly navigate to a certain point in my project. Currently it indicates where I am in the project. I can drag the slider, or I can just click on any point on the bar to navigate to that point. Let's hide a couple of these areas that we've already discussed so I can bring in some other tools. We'll hide Jog and Scrub in the main transport. Now let's pull out the Arranger control area. These buttons provide special playback modes for your play order tracks, which are actually called Arranger tracks in Cubase 4. We're going to be covering more on these concepts later in this course. Next we've got the Master and Sync control area. We've worked with this before in this course. Here we activate the click track and pre-clicks or pre-count. We set the tempo. We activate project synchronization here also. You can set up project synchronization by control clicking on this button as well. That's a command click on your Mac. Next is the marker display and control area. Just click on the Show button to display your current list of markers. As you see, I don't have any, but I can add one. I just click Add, and Cubase will insert a marker at the current position of my playback cursor. Markers are a very convenient way to get around your song. Just click on the marker number to get to that point in your timeline. 
Here we've got the MIDI activity level meter. On the left is MIDI inactivity. On the right is MIDI out activity. Next, we have the audio activity meter showing audio in on the left from your default input. This area will light up if you have any clipping or digital distortion. On the right, we have the audio output activity. That's the output as represented on your main output channel. Any clipping will be indicated with a red light. You can adjust the level of the output channel from the transport panel by left clicking on the slider and moving it up or down. Then you don't have to open the mixer window if you quickly want to increase or decrease your main output. Well, as you can see, the transport panel offers many shortcuts for getting around your project. And this concludes our overview of the transport panel.